Good day, everybody. Uh, today we'll be presenting our assignment on uh, Hofstede four dimension, and uh, our group will be consisting uh, four of us. Uh, my name is Alex, and my name is Charmaine. My name is Rosanna, and my name is Anita Kong. So briefly, uh, we will be presenting four dimension, power distance, uncertainty, avoid. Avoidance and masculinity, masculinity collectivism, and we'll do a recommendation and conclusion. So, with, with, to start off, we we'll have the introduction by Miss uh, Trini. Thank you. Uh, to start off with the introduction, we have just a company named Sri Planchongan Sapa. So, this company is formerly known as Sri Planchongan Hornbill Sindrian Berhad. It was incorporated on the year of 1997 and then reactivated on the year of 2001. It was officially opened by the past chief minister of Sabah named Datuk Chong Kakya. Okay, so this company is actually a subsidiary company of Sabah Tourism Board. Sabah Tourism Board is an agency of Sabah state government under the Ministry of Tourism, Environment and Culture. So moving on into the Roles, Sabah tourism roles are actually to promote Sabah tourism itself and then SPS is to supplement and complement the roles of STD. So basically the roles are to promote um, events, um, doing in events for Sabah tourism board, to do publicity and publication for Sabah tourism board as well as to sell products of Sabah tourism itself. Okay, so in this assignments, we have actually um, do an interview with the manager in Sri Planchongan Sabah named uh, Melissa Go. So um, four of us um, have assigned um, to do three kind of things where we actually um, focusing on four dimensions from Hofstede and then we're going to do recommendations for each of it and then lastly we're going to do a conclusion so firstly we're going to start with the first dimensions um, which is power distance will be presented by Alex okay, thank you very much Min. Uh, today now uh, I'm going to present on the power distance so in this company we uh, give them a set of questions and this set of questions will test how uh, their power distance is low or high so uh, we start first with, I would like to explain this, um, based on my research, Malaysia has one of the largest or the highest power distance in Asia. This was uh, been uh, tested by Harvard Business Review and also the staff. So um, this information also was in actually uh, Hofstede's website <coughs> where they do empirical research on uh, uh, the power distance in Malaysia. So the effects of power distance is um, the senior people will be lacking behind uh, in terms of of collaborative uh, efforts, and this also will create a dissatisfaction between the employees and the employers. So um, the reason why Malaysia has very high feudal, uh, very high power distance is because Malaysia practice feudal system, where we have kings and monarch. So um, we have uh, actually it's not a good or bad in a sense, but this actually will cause some uh, negative effect when it's, it is uh, used wrongly. So this feudal system actually causes uh, uh, the power distance to, to increase. And so to see in this company SPS, um, they have replied that the way they handle their staff is they try to engage them when they're making decisions also or, or doing planning. But I believe that because this interview was done based on the manager itself, um, it might be biased. It might be biased. So um, when they talk about how they want to make decision, the way of making decision is very formal. So uh, when formal, we know that because this company is a subsidiary of a government government agency, is a is for sure follow a more bureaucratic kind of system. So it's obvious that they will have a, a power distance between the managers and the subordinate. So, um, in a sense, power distance actually uh, has a culture where 
it has respect for the, 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 the people in power but it's not good when the, the, the subordinate is unable to, to give a, a real recommendation so it might actually harm the organization so for my recommendation um, this recommendation is based on Harvard uh, Ms. Kelly Sweetman uh, she has listed six uh, recommendations first is to communicate your intention so that means you communicate uh, with intention what you want and with the employee to reply uh, with uh, uh, honesty and frank. The second is to take action. If there is some kind of, uh, of, 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 of action that can improve your government uh, or your organization, it should be taken uh, uh, positively and seriously. And always seek feedback from your sub subordinate. Don't let uh, backsliding to get you off track um, because sometimes you feel that there's a power that you are the manager and that um, responsibility is to make decisions is only yours but this power distance should be not be a hindrance when making decisions and, find, and one more is engage your HR I think HR play a very strong uh, part where building policies that can reduce the power distance where this company SDS maybe it is a uh, subsidiary of government entity but, but then it can actually be better you actually can uh, try to adopt uh, not fully uh, but you can adopt a uh, culture from Google or Yahoo where they have a less uh, flat less hierarchical power where it's more flat and where collaborative and uh, working together is no, uh, it is normal so lastly design a uh, book Ombudsman. So Ombudsman is the person that where they are like an intermediate between the the manager and also the subordinate. So he will he will be the one that um, relies on between both and create reduced power distance. So with that um, a recommendation, I believe the SPS can actually not only be a better organization to reduce the power distance and also it also can help Sabah as a whole. So thank you very much. So uh, I will pass the next uh, presentation, which is uncertainty avoidance. Okay, next I'm going to present on uncertainty avoidance in SPS. So what is uncertainty avoidance? Uncertainty avoidance is related to the degree of anxiety that society's members feel when in uncertain or unknown situations. So according to Hospex study, Malaysia scores very low in this cultural value which means it has a low preference of avoiding uncertainty. However, in today's context, the, there is a significant changes due to the political uncertainty which are more practically oriented. Coupled with high economic growth, people in Malaysia have become motivated to generate wealth. So this new fund well, together with their comparatively high level of competitiveness in Asia, has increased the score of uncertainty avoidance in Malaysia, particularly. Okay, so according to Laila Wati 2005, also found that in Malaysia workplace, administrative policies procedures have been made more explicit as to replace go ask your boss to do practice. So, uh. The manifestations in SPS of uncertainty avoidance. SPS clearly emphasized the importance of having the job requirements and instructions spelled out in details. Uh, meaning to say, they are emphasizing on the importance of giving uh, uh, giving the job requirements and instructions, where it is very important as it gives a brief overview of the role and how it relates to the company vision and mission so that the employees will uh, will know exactly what the roles in their company okay next uh, the in SPS they also clearly inform the rules and regulations of the organizations meaning to say with uh, in, with clearly inform of rules the employees can avoid from misunderstanding of what the position entails and they may know what is expected from them in order to perform their job. Uh, other than that, 
In SPS, the instruction and procedure are highly expected to be followed by the employees as it helps to a better understanding on what they are doing and also helps to enhance uh, the company's performance. Uh, in SPS, they are also following the standard of procedure in order to achieve the performance and reach uh, the expectation of the company. Okay. Next is on the recommendations. So, uh, the first recommendations that I want to highlight is the organization should think creatively as creativity and innovation within a well-run companies always have been uh, recognized as a sure path of success. Uh, therefore, with if the company, uh, if the organization uh, can think creatively, this will help them to encourage the employees to think outside of the box, and therefore they can have a uh, time to explore the innovations ideas. Next, the next recommendation is SPF should be clear and concise about the expectations and the parameters. The organization should provide up-to-date job description. Therefore, the employees will uh, know what they are supposed to do according to the up-to-date job description. And then next is by providing precise instructions and detailed descriptions where the top manager should communicate with their employees on the detailed description and instructions on what uh, they are they should do in their organization. Uh, therefore, it will provide clear and precise job without making any mistake. And lastly, uh, the organization should sometimes take risks. Uh, therefore, they will they will be able to. Uh, improve their organizations and achieve a competitive advantage. Okay, so next, uh, next presentations will be presented by my colleague Shamay Elena. So moving on into the next slides, I will be discussing about the third dimensions from Hofstad, which is masculinity. So. What motivates people is an important question to find out if the people is actually living in a masculine or feminine society. So according to Hofstadt, he refers that masculinity is actually seen as being dominance and assertiveness, while being feminine is actually seen to be reflected as a caring, loving or interdependence. So based on the graph from Hofstadt dimensions, Malaysia has scored 50 out of 100, which this, this dimension um, preference for the dimensions is cannot be determined. Okay, but looking into Malaysia, particularly Malaysia, those masculinity behavior was actually already started during school where the students are actually asked to write down their grades or the personality that they have in order to make themselves look better. However, um, there's also stated by um, Lai et al. on the year of 2010 where they actually stated that Malays and the Chinese people, both of them display a very strong male dominant society. However, looking into the interviews that we've done with the manager, SPF actually have four different departments and it's actually chaired and handled by one general manager which is a woman named Puan Siti Bahaya Damsal and then uh, these four departments under her is actually held by two men and two women so they believe that having women represented at upper levels in the organization is an indicator that the organization culture is inclusive as for us um, inclusive we can see that it can um, uh, represents to a better results for employees as they will feel they are included valued and supported so the, uh, the manager also highlighted that it doesn't matter if the company is dominated by men or women um, both gender is important to have a professional career in bringing development to the company so basically, decisions that are made in 
first making decisions or even finding a ways to solve problems, they actually um, base on the opinions from the committee. So those committee who have the guts to voice out their opinions, they will bring up into a discussions and then jump into um, making the decisions. Okay. Um, also, according to the interviews, we they also highlighted that um, they doesn't care of the preferable of having a man or women to be in a high level positions as um, it is more important to be looking if the as as long as the person can bring up uh, development to the organizations. So the recommendations, my recommendation is that um, this organization, the manager, should listen more in considering and allowing any emotions and suggestions even though there is a tendency to criticize. They also have to engage with the small talk with the subordinate, subordinates in order to involve them and engage them to voice out their opinions or any uh, future problems. The manager should actively listen to them so that they will feel appreciated. Um, also, um, these organizations, I believe that they should have this kind of mentoring and mentee program in order for them to um, st strengthen the relationships and then so that they will have a better understanding of what are they doing, how they actually do, how are they expected to deliver the task. Okay. Now I'm going to present on the fourth dimension of Hofstede, which is the individualism and the collectivism. Okay, according to the dimension, Individualism stands for a society in which the ties between individu individuals are loose, while everybody is expected to look after him or herself and his or herself immediate family only. While the collectivism stands for a society in which people from birth onwards are integrated into strong, which uh, can help people in continue to protect them in exchange for unquestioning the loyalty. Okay. On the other hand, in the context of Sri Plancongan Sabah, individualist and collectivist culture are likely to have a various um, economic effect in their company which only started to be explored because individual culture gave um, social status reward rather than the collectivism more to the standard monetary intensive and innova innovation while in contrast uh, the collectivism make collective action easier because individuals uh, in the internalized group interest to a greater degree and however it also encourage conformity and discourage individuals from standing out okay um, as a result this conscious effort or technique, the social process in the group becomes slightly modified. This conscious effort may assume is made in line with the general objective or aims of group who mentioned, like I mentioned above. Okay. Now the situation in the group represented by the modified social process uh, to, to get a large extent what the next conscious effort or technique of the worker shall be and obviously this requires observation on the part of the worker. Okay. My our recommendation for the fourth dimension is sometimes company goals directly relate to workplace culture. Okay. The the first point is to blending. It is possible to combine both collectivism and in the individualism in the workplace for a more balanced approach. For example, manager can assign large projects to a team who can cooperatively to share knowledge, skill, and responsibilities, while the individuals can be uh, 
still can be evaluated on their contribution to the overall project, which can increase their accountability to get the job done. And on the downside, <coughs> shared responsibility may mean that the workplace uh, can, uh, can produce the free riders who don't fully complete duties, while if you work in the collectivism, like in the group, you can uh, get the job with, with your colleague and your partner. Okay, that's all. The conclusion part will be presented by Alex. Okay, thank you, Rosiana. So, uh, to conclude, um, uh, it was a very interesting assignment uh, to do an interview with SPS. So, um, I'd like to conclude in achieving successful business and organization, it is very important to understand the importance of organization culture. It, it is a crucial to adapt a positive culture value in an organization in order to retain and attract employees to stay loyal in the company. Hence, it helps increase employees and companies' uh, performance. Besides, cultural norms plays a large part in the mechanics and interpersonal relationship of the workplace. Therefore, managers need to understand the importance of culture for the organizational change. Day-to-day -day decision making of the organization is made guided with the culture organization that represents certain predefined policies. So with that, um, I'd like to thank uh, the audience and also my, my team uh, for uh, doing a very good job. So we like to thank you from all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.